uh, going over here to our uh, main point of interest. It is Hot Wheels A History of Speed. Uh, of course, kind of like uh, some of the other story missions per se, uh, they give you uh, either a time to complete it in or a score to beat uh, and then give you a star rating based off of that. So let's jump into this and see what kind of Hot Wheels car they give us and what kind of history lesson they give us in the meantime. Ooh, so we got a Lamborghini Diablo SV. Yes, very cool. Before we get started, I should say that this is the fourth of the fifth uh, story mode mission. So if you don't want to see spoilers or anything, you want to experience this yourself, please, please turn off this video or skip this part here. Um, I definitely don't want to be spoiling it for people who don't want to, you know, for those who want to experience this. Okay, so have they all left? Okay, cool. So this is what the story mission number four kind of looks like. They've got Haley kind of talking quite a bit about, you know, whatever it's going on. And I'm, I'm going to be quite honest. I am... It's very difficult to kind of listen slash uh, read the text um, while driving because there's so much going on the screen. And you've just got your uh, subtitles going like crazy. So I might have to go back and uh, review some of these and really look at it because it's it's hard to focus on at all so with this challenge as you can kind of tell here uh we have to get to our target in under five and a half minutes which is pretty easy but we have to stay above uh the 100 miles an hour because if we don't uh it starts ticking down our little timer here so um if I knew that to begin with, I'd be a little bit more focused on that. But again, I'm trying to commentate while read, while drive. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's the other type of the boost. So I'm going to go into seventh gear and we're just going to hang on for dear life. And then we'll downshift to get our revs back up as we come down here. We'll do a little bit of a drift. Neat. So yeah, this uh, the views are really cool. Uh, having the three different types of uh, terrains in the maps, uh, free floating in the area. This is just yeah. And then the yeah, and then the voice acting is mm, not ideal, especially for those trying to commentate on their own videos. <laughs> So we got two and a half miles thereabouts to get to our destination. Um, I don't know if we're actually going to make it without going below 100 miles an hour, but there are a lot of there are a lot of tight chicanes earlier. So if if it's all straight and true to the end, I think we'll be fine. But anyone's guess at this point. All right, here we go. Looks like we are straight to the end here. So hanging on for dear life once again. This is little turbine turbo fans. Bring us well past our top speed. And then we probably promptly slam into that wall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this part. So nor normally how it's worked is that you have like a driving mission to get to the destination and then when you get to the destination it'll be something different. Uh, so in multiple instances it was kind of like a drag race or like another kind of race. Uh, in this instance as you can tell here we're using Rip Rod and we are trying to collect, I want to say the three star is 25 chests in under uh, two and a half minutes and I am just kind of driving around aimlessly so if you have a good system um, this would be pretty pretty easy to get but I'm just kind of blowing it right now <laughs> come on come on this is not good I'm wasting a lot of time here I've got only a minute and a half to get another 16 I don't know if I'm actually going to do this I swear I saw a treasure chest over there, so I think most of them are going to be over here. And with the the textures and the lighting here, 
with the snow falling and whatnot into my headlights. It's creating kind of this this mist that I can't really see through all that well. Um, which is kind of difficult to align yourself in the chests on ice. So I'm going to try my best here. Get a little bit of grip there. Get us loosely in the right direction. 53 seconds left. Trying not to go too fast on ice here. And we're going to take a look at the left side after we get a couple more out here. I think this is the last one out in this section. Okay, that's just a dirt spot. So is there really anything else over here? Ah, there's a chest, but we got less than 30 seconds. So we're going to go as fast as we can, and we can follow this track here. 21, 2, there's one chest over here. 15 seconds. 9, 8, 7, oh, we got this. Beautiful. Can we get 26? Ah, missed it. <laughs> got 25. That's what we needed. So it's not Rip Rod, it's 2 Jet Z. Oh well. So yeah, fortunately for getting uh, the three gold stars or whatever on uh, kind of the history of speed challenges or the story modes, uh, they're pretty easy to get three stars. Again, it could just be the difficulty I've got it set at, which is above average. Uh, I want to see that setting is, but um, yeah, most of it is is pretty pretty easy to get on the first time around. If you have a substantial mistake, uh, you might be able to recover in time, but uh, yeah. All right, going back to the Ice Cauldron here, we are playing as the 1997 Toyota Supra GT500, which uh, I believe if you guys have seen the um, Gran Turismo 7 S4 uh, tutorial, or watching me struggle through that, I think this is the same car as that. So bringing it all home, adding some semblance of continuity through all this but we're in a race in the sky above the ice cauldron uh, one of the few races by the looks of it that actually has multiple laps but as we approach our turbo here we're going to swap up to six gear and let it take us up to seven and a half thousand rpm as we make our way down into the volcano and this is just super cool. Uh, there are not many games that gives you that sense of speed and then being able to get you that close to Volcano and then have these awesome little uh, cinematic jumps here or uh, little jump... I'm not going to... I wasn't really jump cam, but you know what I mean. Um, so... The comparison that I think many of you are probably thinking about now is... All right... So, this guy here, hi, that's me, this guy, is releasing Hot Wheels Unleashed videos still on his channel. And now we've got Forza Horizon 5's Hot Wheels expansion. It's kind of hard to not compare them at this point because they are two games using that same brand. So the question is, is there one that is objectively better than the other? And that's difficult to say because the Hot Wheels Unleashed game has completely different physics, has a completely different art style, has a hugely different selection of cars, but they're going for a different feel. They're going for the feel that you are a miniature car driving around, you know, your parents' basement or driving around, like, a parking garage or a skate park or in your uh, college... I don't know. You know, just college in general. And this goes for the other side of it, where they keep the scale that, you know, the cars and the people are life-size, but they just have these tracks that are blown up to life-scale. 
of course, you know, having these three floating islands in up above, you know, Guanajuato is completely unrealistic. So there is a little bit of that imagination still being used. Um, but again, it's still using somewhat realistic handling models from, you know, Forza in general. And then Hot Wheels Unleashed is using the uh, handling model as if you are, you know, a couple ounce, you know, made of plastic toy car. And if you hit a wall, you go flying type thing. Um, so that being said... The answer is it completely depends. If you enjoy Forza Horizon a lot and you enjoy Hot Wheels a lot, well, then it's a no-brainer. You should definitely, if you don't already have Forza Horizon 5, you should definitely get the expansion. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. Uh, don't get me wrong. But if you dislike... Forza in any way, shape, or form. Why are you watching this video? But if you really love a wide variety of Hot Wheels-specific cars to choose from and play as, Hot Wheels Unleashed might be a little bit of a better option for you. Uh, I disliked Hot Wheels Unleashed kind of um, car selection. I wish there were more supercars or wish there were more of that kind of stuff. They redeem it by bringing back the Acceleracers, which was awesome. But, you know, if you want more of those supercar kind of feels and whatnot, you know, play this. You know, you can drive a P1 or you can drive a Speedtail or you can drive, you know, a 488 Pista or a McLaren F1 or any of that. And you're not going to get that what Hot Wheels Unleashed. You'll get like an Audi R8 and you might get... I don't know, a knockoff Formula One car, maybe. But you're going to get all the accelerators. You're going to get the hot seat. You're going to get uh, the hot dog mobile. You're going to get uh, the ice cream mobile or, like, the ice cream stand mobile. It's just, like, it, it's a going for a completely different... Maybe not a completely different audience... Uh, it's just going for a completely different idea or a different theme.